What's up everybody, hope you are doing well. Today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different and in this video I'll be showing you how to install jailbreak apps without jailbreaking on iOS 13 using a pretty in-depth Siri shortcut called iTweak. Now I'm gonna be focusing more on the available tweaks that you can use with the Siri shortcut, but there is a way that you can install apps as well, which I will get into a little further along in the video, so let's jump into it. First, I wanted to begin by saying that this video is going to be a bit long as I want to get as much in depth as I can and I wanna cover as much information as possible, and it's been a while since I've made one of these videos. So I will put a table of contents in the description of the video with timestamps and subtitles so you can jump around based on your interests or needs and skip the parts that you don't need just for an FYI, it will be down there in the description of the video. Be sure to watch the requirements and FAQ sections. I highly recommend those if you're on the fence or aren't sure about jailbreak apps in the first place. So with that said, let's jump into it. So if you have watched this series before on my channel, you're familiar with some of my old install guides, which allowed you to install jailbreak apps without jailbreaking. Those guides were pretty popular, thank you guys, and they really focused on application installers that you would download from Safari, which acted almost as third-party app stores, and they offered a decent selection of apps that you could install through profiles on your iOS device. Now the install process for installing apps was very similar to the App Store. You would download the installer itself from Safari, for example, Tweakbox or App Valley. And then once the installer was installed and the profile was installed, you could download additional apps or tweaks directly from the installers themselves, just like you would be able to with Cydia on a jailbroken device or another App Store entirely. Now that type of install was standard really all the way through iOS 12, but with iOS 12 and iOS 13, Siri Shortcuts was integrated into iOS and it opened some very interesting capabilities, some of which I will be showing you in this video. Before we get there, be sure to click that like button and subscribe with notifications on for more content like this. I also upload videos every Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I greatly appreciate the support guys, it means a lot. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and my social media profiles below the video to see other exclusive updates. Now this new install process allows you to install jailbreak apps and tweaks without a jailbreak using a Siri shortcut called iTweak. iTweak was developed by developer Jonathan Setzer, and according to the description of the shortcut, iTweak is a jailbreak alternative with more than 60 tweaks for iOS. Pretty amazing. Now the shortcut was initially developed for iOS 12, but I've played around with it for about two days now and many of the functions work in iOS 13. That said, I haven't really tested everything. So if you discover any of the functions not working, I just wanted to give you that heads up. If you are on iOS 12 or iOS 13, I definitely think this shortcut is worth checking out even if 100% of the tweaks don't work as there may be future updates that will fix your issues. And if it doesn't fix your issue, then you can try one of the other guides on my channel with one of the other install methods. So I wanted to do something different in this video and do a prerequisite section and I wanted to address a few questions that I received in the comments of many of my old videos in this series about the install process. So first up, why would someone go this route of not jailbreaking their device if they wanted to install jailbreak apps, tweaks, or themes? Why would you want to use an alternate install method rather than just jailbreaking and using Cydia? Okay, there are a few reasons for this. First, jailbreaking actually voids your warranty with Apple. So if you jailbreak your device, you are giving yourself access to file systems with iOS that Apple doesn't want you to have. If you are still within a warranty period and you brought a jailbroken device to Apple, your warranty would be voided. And they also would not be very happy with that. Apple hates jailbreaking. Obviously, if they wanted you to have something, they would just implement it directly into their operating system. So that said, if you restore the device to factory settings, you will get your warranty back, but just wanted to throw that out there. Another reason is that jailbreaking actually slows down your device. In my experience, every time I've jailbroken and installed Cydia, the device would gain extra functionality, but it would be slower than it was before over time. Sometimes it's not too noticeable, but it's definitely slower than stock iOS especially on an older device, so you will notice it. Now thirdly, jailbreaking doesn't provide as much value simply as it used to. Many features from old jailbreaks have been integrated into iOS directly by Apple, often in a better way, so jailbreaking seems less necessary. So for example, the App Store itself, the Control Center, the screen recording in iOS, quick replying to notifications or messages, and even having wallpapers or dark mode were all inspired partially by the jailbreak community. Now that Apple has included those, often there's less incentive to jailbreak. Now finally, Cydia has lost some functionality over the years, like the ability to purchase some tweaks in the app, and so people sometimes aren't as excited to jailbreak with less options and choices to install. Now I've also been asked, do I still personally jailbreak and what are the benefits of these no jailbreak methods to install apps and tweaks? So I personally haven't been jailbroken on a daily driver device in a few years. I do like the stock OS on my daily driver device, but I do enjoy 
jailbreaking secondary devices for fun and to see what's available in Cydia. Now that said, the benefits of going one of these alternate jailbreak routes where you can install the apps and tweaks without actually jailbreaking are that you get some jailbreak functionality, albeit not as much as a full jailbreak, and you get to avoid the cons that I mentioned for the previous questions, like you get to keep your warranty, you get to keep stock iOS speed usually, you get the idea. Last question, will these methods harm my device? Now there's always a risk when installing something that's not signed by Apple, just to give you guys that forewarning, I have not experienced any issues with these methods I've tried recently, and if you do have issues, you can always restore and you will be fine. Just make sure to always back up your data before attempting these, if you want to be totally 100% sure. So let's jump into the install process. I'm doing this on my iPhone 10, and the first step is to make sure you're on a device that is running iOS 12 or iOS 13. Now this should work for you as long as your device supports one of those two versions of iOS, as well as Siri shortcuts. So you want to make sure that you have Siri shortcuts installed from the App Store. As you can see, I have it here on my device. It is free, so go ahead and download that from the App Store. You'll also need to trust Siri shortcuts from third-party developers. Now to do this, you're going to go ahead and go into the settings application and then go into the shortcuts section. There is a slider that you will need to turn on here that says allow untrusted shortcuts. Now if it is grayed out, that simply means you did not run any Siri shortcuts yet. So you will need to run one Siri shortcut before you can do anything. You can run any shortcut you want. Just go into the shortcut application and as you can see here, I actually have weather installed. So I just go ahead and click that and it tells me my current weather. Once you run anything, you can go ahead and go back into settings and enable the allow untrusted shortcuts. Now the second step is to open Safari and you're going to want to load a website. Also this install method only works in the Safari browser so you do have to use Safari for this, but you'll want to go to a website called Routine Hub. I'll put the link that you need to visit in the description below the video so you have easy access to it. It'll be the developers page, but you can see I have it loaded up here on my device. Basically what Routine Hub is, is a website that houses a large collection of Siri shortcuts. And so once you load the link that I have in the description, you should be on this page. You should see Jonathan Setzer somewhere on the page, as you can see right here, and you should have the option to go ahead and click Get Shortcut. Go ahead and click Get Shortcut and it will automatically jump you into the shortcuts application. Now you want to scroll all the way to the bottom here. It might take a little while, as you can see on my device. And then you want to go ahead and click Add Untrusted Shortcut. And you will now see it in your shortcuts list. You have officially installed the shortcut. Now to use the shortcut, all you have to do is go ahead and click on it. It may ask you to give access to iCloud as well as the Routine Hub website. So go ahead and click OK and you will be presented with this home menu. Now here is where you can see many of the tweaks that you can use with your device that are really cool in my opinion. So I'm not gonna go through all of the tweaks, but I wanted to highlight a few of them that I find really cool. First, I wanna jump into the power settings. So if you go ahead and click power settings, you will be presented with this list where you can respring, reboot, or reset your device. And that's really cool to me. Stock devices almost never allow you to respring like a jailbroken device can, which is pretty cool. You can also use settings in the system tweaks section to enable theater mode if you are in a movie theater. I skipped it, it was here at the top. You can install invisible icons or change the icons for applications. You can hide dock wallpapers and it even has an advanced low power mode. There's the low power mode plus plus. Now they do have a flashlight disco with your camera, which is a little random, but it's still cool. I'll go ahead and click it. And as you guys can see, the camera is kind of going wild here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click stop on the shortcut. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the flashlight as well. Now you can also install themes in your device as well as download YouTube and Instagram posts and some of the tweaks. I'm gonna show you guys the themes. Go ahead and just click it and it goes ahead and opens a website here, iSkin, and that'll actually walk you through the theming of your device. Very, very cool there. Now all of these come with just one click access. Very cool stuff for a non jailbroken device. Now I've also installed the iTweak jailbreak tools and the iTweak settings. And honestly, you may run into some issues as I did myself. So for example, I installed the iTweak settings shortcut and you guys might have seen an error pop up on my screen before when I ran the themes shortcut. I installed the iTweak settings shortcut and not all of the options are working. So if I go ahead and click that and then I go to main menu, it gives me a little error saying shortcut not valid. Now these types of issues are to be expected over time and you may need to install updated versions of the shortcut or other apps and shortcuts in order to solve this, which is to be expected. I think that might be because I'm on iOS 13. If you're on iOS 12, this should still work very much for you. For most of the tweaks that I've tested from this app, they've worked fine and it really does add a cool dimension to your 
iOS device. Also with Routine Hub, you can definitely go to the developer's site that I have linked in the description. He may have more tweaks, or you could actually see similar developers that have tweaks just like this for your device. Now, if you do find that it's not working for you, or you simply don't like this and you'd like to uninstall iTweak, it's really, really simple. All you have to do is go ahead and open up Shortcuts, and you can go ahead and click Edit in the upper left of the device, and then click whichever shortcut you want to delete. Click the Trash button, and then it will simply be deleted. You can also hold on the icon itself, and it will give you a delete button right there at the bottom in order to delete it. Once you delete the shortcut, you won't have access to the tweaks anymore, and it will disappear from your device, and you'll be good to go, honestly. Nothing will remain on your device, and you won't have to restore or anything. So that's the tweak side of the app. If you would like to install the old version for those apps and games, just for your own reference, it's publicly available on the iTweak Routine Hub page that I linked down there in the description from the developer, and the old version does allow you to access all the tweaks and themes that I showed in this video along with those apps and games. So I won't be showing that version in this video, but I did want to let you guys know that it's available if you are looking for that. So ultimately, what are my thoughts on this shortcut? Well, in my opinion, iTweak is one of the coolest ways to get jailbreak tweaks that you can use without a jailbreak that I've found. The only downside I've found is that not all of them seem to work with iOS 13, as you saw within this video. If you're on iOS 12, I'm sure it works a little bit better. I still enjoy using this. Not only is it a fresh way to use new tweaks as opposed to the old installers, a nice little change, but it allows for one-click access to many of them and integrates directly into iOS a little bit better than some of the old profiles and installers did. You can also uninstall very easily, and I found that the functionality works a little better in iOS. You don't need any profiles, it just stalls directly into the iOS app, making access really easy. I really like the interface, and I found it useful for the short time that I've used it. Shout out to developer Jonathan Setzer, as this is a cool shortcut. I've enjoyed using it. I always appreciate it when developers make anything like this to make our devices more usable, especially without a jailbreak. So if you guys have any questions on this shortcut, definitely leave me your comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. I upload every Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and your support's greatly appreciated. I will link my Twitter and my Instagram as well as all my profiles on social media in the description of the video. Definitely most active on Twitter so check all of those out and definitely drop a follow if you're interested in seeing what I'm up to in the meantime. And as always guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.